Good evening, baseball fans. It is Sunday, June 23rd. I am Susie. That is Kelsey. This is Bourbon and Baseball, all the balls edition. And away we go. I'm going to give you the rated R warning right off the top because there will be some four letter words, maybe all the four letter words, and some, probably some inappropriate adult humor because that's just who I am as a person. So if that's not your jam, probably ski daddle on out of here or put the earmuffs on the children, whatever. And away we go. Kelsey. Your team won. My team won. Are we in the upside down again? What's happening? Maybe, but I'll take it. Yeah, we've got big smiles on our faces. Very happy Sunday to you. And yeah, the Cardinals, the Cardinals swept the Giants. The Cardinals are two games over 500 for the first time since Yadier Molina and Albert Pujols retired at the end of 2020. So <laughs> big day. Big day for Cardinals fans. That is very nice. I can only imagine what it would be like to reach 500 because we're still not there, but we're gaining some ground. So we're going to be there. We're going to be there. And we'll go over that just here in, in a little bit. But yeah, making moves. And that with that, I'm very excited. But to start off, Kelsey, we have the notes here. And you said, don't peek. And I said, okay, I'm not going to peek. So I don't know what's, I don't know what's happening. What's happening. Tell me what well, am I not supposed to peek at? Yeah, I was hoping you had not seen this yet, but the athletic MLB staff put out a an article based on a player poll that they did a week or so ago. They did a player poll featuring the worst organizations, the most overrated peer, the best vibes guy and more. And they presented the findings of their poll in this article. And so I wanted to see who you think the players maybe voted for on some of these. And then we'll go through and give the results. So the first one is the players were asked, who is the best player in baseball? Who do you think got the most votes from his peers for best player in baseball? Okay. So this is not what I think. This is what I think the players voted. Mm -hmm. So uh, what do I think? Who do I think the players voted the best? Is it Shohei Otani? It is a whopping 46% voted for Shohei Otani, 26.5% Ronald Acuna Jr. And then Mookie Betts and Aaron Judge both got 8.8% of the vote. Mike Trout is rounding out the top five there with 3.9%. Okay. Yeah. I think that was the easiest one to be like, yeah, it's Shohei Otani. Yeah. Let's see. So this is an interesting one. And I love that they asked this. Who did the player say is the most overrated player in baseball? There is a list of about 10 or so here. Oh. But there is one player who got a much higher percentage than the others. Yes. Is it Aaron Judge? (laughs) It is not. He's actually not on the list. It is somebody we have talked about. I think we were even talking about him last week because – he has, here's the thing. He's somebody who's made more headlines for Jazz Chisholm Jr. Yeah, for talking <laughs> than for his stats. Jazz Chisholm Jr. received 20.3% of the vote. Anthony Rendon got just over 10% oh. of the vote. Other guys who are on here that got 5% or less of the vote, Carlos Correa, which I actually thought was a good one too. Tim Anderson, Jack Flaherty, Pete Alonzo, Cody Bellinger, Alex Bregman. Ellie De La Cruz, Manny Machado, and Blake Snell. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Throwing some shade. Yeah. This yeah, is for sure, for sure though, Jazz Chisholm. Yeah. I actually like that. I I don't know that I would have picked that out of obscurity, but when I think about it, I'm like, absolutely. For sure. And especially because he was like on the cover of MLB the show. And Mm -hmm. he definitely, he was also on a team, like on a Marlins team last season, especially that could have done more even than they did. And that's not necessarily his fault, but yeah. Absolutely. This one's super fun. And this is the one question that I would ask every baseball player if I got a one-on-one with them, putting aside their stats and going solely on vibes, who do you want most on your team? team and they did put a disclaimer here that this must be someone the player is not friends with and doesn't know well so they asked them to pick someone who wasn't just a friend and again with this one there was a lot there's a lot of players who got votes 
but there was one player who got 12.6% of the vote, which was twice as much as the next player. Wow. Yeah. Best vibes guy, huh? All of these guys, especially the first five or six, have pretty good stats, too. Oh. Okay, because the one guy that I was thinking of, he's not horrible, but he's not an everyday player. So, probably not. Garrett Stubbs. He is on this list. He did receive over 2% of the vote, so he's on the list. Okay. Is it... I feel like Julio is probably on there. Yeah? He's not, actually. Really? Okay. Not an everyday player who is on here is Kike Hernandez. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Who got 12.6% of the vote is Mookie Betts. Oh, okay. I could see that. I could see that. Yeah. I could see that he's got a good rep as being a great teammate and he does just mm-hmm. seem like he gets along with everybody. He yeah. seems like chill, but also like high energy at the same time. I dig that. Shohei Otani actually got 6.3% of the vote. He was the next highest. Oh, okay. Pick. And then Ronald Acuna Jr., Bryce Harper, Aaron Judge, and Kyle Schwarber all received 4% of the vote. Okay. Mike Trout, Lance Lynn. Hey. <laughs> I could... Any yeah, for sure. I love that he was on here. He is the only okay. Garrett Cole is on here too, but Garrett Cole and mm. Lance Lynn are yeah the only pitchers. I guess you could count Otani, but not this season. And then Jose Altuve is on here as well. Good list. Have you? Did you see the outburst that Jose Altuve had a couple of games ago? I did, but I have no idea what it was a what it was about. I just saw the GIF of it. I need you to know that this is the second time I've ever seen him this year. Yeah. He does not do this. So his at bat previously, the first pitch was a pitch inside that got called a strike. And then he got called out on a strike and it was an eight pitch at bat, but seven pitch at bat. And the last strike was a called strike and it was high. I'm talking like it was at his neck. No, at no way, shape, or form would it have been a strike for Jose Altuve, yeah. and got and ended the inning. And this was already super egregious call again, and it was just, it was too much for him apparently because it, the strike zone had just been fucking awful. And so he he was heated. He was very mad, and he doesn't typically get mad because it's Jose Altuve, and it's that's not who he is. So as he's coming out of the dugout for the next inning he starts barking at the second base umpire about the strike zone and that's when joe spada was like no uh." so joe spada has to run out there so that jose altuve doesn't get tossed and i'm not saying that this may be like a rally starter but typically altuve is like very quiet leader do rather than say and then fromber got in into his head and altuve marched up there up to the mound and was talking to Fromber and a bowl. Oh, and since then we've been fucking winning. They showed some fire and we're like, Oh, okay. Then yes. Sometimes that's the what Jose goes. Yeah. Sometimes it just takes a little fire from a guy. You don't normally see it from. It definitely no. didn't hurt. No. Okay. I got a couple more for you here. Okay. This I'm one, ready. this question they posed to the players was which team would you sign with if contracts state taxes and rosters were not a factor so like which team just seems really attractive for players to sign with for no particular reason i will say that teams got a lot of votes uh, or many teams got votes but there was one team that again got almost 13 percent of the vote that was the outlier i would probably have to say it's going to be one of the one of the coasts. So it's either going to be Dodgers or Yankees. Dodgers and Yankees are both in the top five. Uh, the Dodgers got 8.1% of the vote. The New York Yankees got 6.9% of the vote. But the top pick was actually Alex Anthopoulos Island. The Atlanta Braves got 12. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. The Red Sox number two. The Texas Red Rangers. Sox, really? The top five then. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was weird too. And then the Chicago Cubs actually got 6.9% of the vote along with the New York Yankees. 
Yeah, I thought that was strange. I don't know. There's a lot of major cities on here. I guess you could argue most Major League Baseball teams are in major cities, but like New York, Chicago, L.A. Yeah, but the Rangers? What are we? I thought the Rangers was weird. Organizationally, I think it's probably appealing to players that they have a former player as in the front office as the GM. Interesting. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. All right. If, if you're not basing it, I guess the, the follow-up question to that would be like, if you're not basing it on contract, state taxes and rosters, what are you basing on? What are you basing it on? Yeah. I'm like, maybe where they do spring training, their coaching staff, but that's constantly evolving too. So I don't know. Okay. It would be, yeah, it'd be interesting to hear more feedback on what they based their answer on. Okay. Last one here. This is the one I was like, give me the tea. <laughs> what organizations have bad reputations among players? And they did allow multiple answers for this. There were 79 uh -huh. responses, but there was one organization that got way more votes than any other. Uh -huh. And a couple, the two and three, that also got a good amount. Who do you think? Okay, I'm going to. Reputation among players. I'm going to have to go White Sox Athletics. Oakland A's are first. And um, I think that's a given with the right. current state of the athletics, right? And then White Sox are second. The Los Angeles Angels. Are, I could see that. I could you know, see that. We've talked, we've talked directly to Artie Moreno. So I get it. I do. But let's see. They asked people, in your own words, why did you pick the athletics? Mm -hmm. And these are all anonymous answers, but one player is quoted saying, have you seen what they're doing to the city of Oakland and their fans? And another player says, it doesn't seem like they want to win. And another player says, I've heard Oakland is pretty rough. Sacramento for three years? I've been to that ballpark before. They can't find something better on the white wow. side. Quotes say, I've never heard a good thing. Oh, damn. Uh, quote, Unlike some other bad teams, they have more potential to be good. Interesting. Yeah, that's true. Uh, another quote says, it sounds like no one wants to be there day in and day out. Like it's a grind just to show up at the ballpark. I couldn't imagine. That's interesting because I like to hear that the team culture yeah. plays into that. I think there are some guys yeah. like Anthony Rendon who clearly just think showing up at the ballpark is a grind kind of maybe regardless. But I do think culture and environment, just like any job, would have a lot to do with it. And uh, this last one just says poor communication has it all right there. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would do it. But yeah, I'll send you this uh, article because there's some more interesting things in here and just player polls on should Major League Baseball shut down midseason so players can participate in the Olympics and stuff like that. And there's all kinds of good quotes. So maybe we can share it in the show notes. But I thought that was sure. really cool. That was a great idea. Yeah. Athletic, whoever came up with that. Kudos. I like it. Good stuff. Good fun. Yeah, for sure. Did you watch? I assume you watched it because it has the Cardinals in it. But the Rickwood Stadium game. I did. Yeah. I got to interview actually the executive director of Rickwood Field a few months back. And so I was already like super into it just because I had talked to him directly and he was actually very much responsible for even pitching the idea to Major League Baseball. It wasn't like Major League Baseball had this idea. It was this guy's idea. Who's the executive really? director. Yeah. And he came to them and was like, hey, maybe come here and do this. And then Major League Baseball has put over $5 million of renovations into the stadium. And I don't know about you. Did you watch it? I watched bits and pieces of it. We were in the middle of, some, of, of something else going on. And so I watched a lot of the clips, though, and I saw some of the game. I wasn't able to watch the entire game. But the fact, what really struck, struck with me was the fact that they made the field resemble back when Willie Mays played. Yeah. with all of, But all of the padding and stuff was with the actual advertisements, but it was like actual padding. And I'm all, I'm sorry, that's padding back there. Good on you. That's yeah. the best camouflage I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, it was so cool. Everything about it. I think they just nailed it. It was obviously very cool. They had the first ever all black umpire crew. So that was a really cool way to just honor the whole experience and, and really focus on what it was all about. Obviously honoring Willie Mays, who we lost just the Tuesday before the game. Mm -hmm. So it was actually it ended up being very poetic the way that they tied up the timing of all of that into it. I don't think they could have done it better. And I'm glad that they took the time and attention to do it that way. 
and bring light to the Negro Leagues and have all they brought all the players who are still yeah. alive and were able to make it out on the field before the game. And that was so freaking cool. And you could just see some of them, especially, were having the time of their lives. And to just have that recognition on the national stage, maybe for the first time ever, probably for most of yeah. them. Yeah. I Do you think that they might make it a regular thing because it went over so well? I hope so. I, I honestly really do. And partially because of the historical factor of the Negro Leagues and with the integration of the Negro League stats into the MLB stats, I just, I love it. And the fact that you have to talk about race in order to integrate all of these things. And my girls were asking, What's, what is this? Mom, why? And so yay for the nine-year-olds not knowing what racism is yet because hooray that's awesome but it was super poignant for me when I heard the Reggie Jackson interview beforehand and I was all oh okay yeah. I didn't realize that it was going to get this heavy great for Reggie to bring it to light because it's amazing and a little sad to think that people nowadays that are our age are like oh yeah no it's gone I'm all but yeah. it's not exactly. it's legitimately not it's and being Asian a, a step away from white people apparently but even growing up in Vegas I faced racism and I've told this to my white friends are all wait what they're like what are you talking about oh the stories I could tell you they're all yeah. huh what? Well, that's yeah, really no, it point. like happens. I think that's a really good point that, and the, the reason alone that we have to keep talking about it because there are many of us who have been fortunate enough to not experience it in our daily lives. Mm -hmm. And so we don't, and I grew up with parents and in a community that I was not exposed to that way of thinking, but right. It is so important to realize that it that it existed and it still exists and that people are living that experience that is different than your own. Because I think one of the biggest challenges that we face is if we have not interacted with people whose experiences are different than our own and that's where we get so short-sighted with things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's obviously a small part of a very big, heavy conversation. And I agree with you. I'm glad, as shocked as I was, good on him for taking it there and using that platform and I, I have you seen his documentary I, Reggie Jackson has a documentary I have, have you? I need to watch it because I've heard it's so good yeah and I again I was not all obviously before baseball Susie and I was like I don't understand I thought Reggie Jackson was Mr. Yankee it was a whole thing and much to my shock I was like he left the Yankees and he went to the A's what do you mean and I, again, I was shocked. And then I was all, oh, and now he's a special consultant for the Astros, which I just know irks so many people. But the fact that it is prevalent, I'm all, I was amazed. And just all of the flabbers were gasted when I watched it. And I was all, oh, I'm like, I think I got to watch it again because I know I missed things trying to comprehend. And so I'm all, I'm going to watch it again at some point. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was telling to... my husband, he goes, what? He's like, how did you not know that, Amal? Before Baseball Susie, what? all yeah. I knew, Reggie Jackson, Yankees. Oh, no, I need to watch. Yeah, I need to watch it for sure. And yeah, I think that one of the other great things that the reason that baseball has a responsibility to continue to highlight it is that the integration of the Negro Leagues and African-American players into baseball was such a big part of the civil rights movement and mm. of the evolution of that, it, it, it was bigger than baseball for sure. And since they were such a big part of it, like it is a responsibility of Major League Baseball to keep that storyline alive and continue to elevate those voices who are still out there. And we're fortunate enough yep. that they are still out there and still talking yep, about absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yep. And cool. if you guys haven't seen the clip that we're talking about, I will insert it into the show notes. But just be aware there is there is the N word prevalent in the it is bleeped out but i have seen and heard some of the ones that aren't for some reason i was like how did that what but just it really just caught so you know. me off guard when he said yeah. it but it also made me pay attention mm -hmm. just be forewarned 
if you do watch it and that is triggering to you, it is there. But I will link that in the show notes with the with the warning as well. So it is thunderstorming at my house and oh. I like walls are shaking. It's very intensely. Oh my. So hopefully my lights don't start to flicker or anything. But um, okay. we're here. <laughs> I'm like the powerful thing and the thunder is right. Roaring. Yes. It's yes. It's very but awesome. It's, um thing that I have to take away from it wasn't specifically from the Rickwood game but from the series that started with the Rickwood game as you mentioned the Cardinals and the Giants played and they wore really cool throwback uniforms I yes. like the Stars uniforms so much better than the City Connects so that was cool and I really wish that they were selling them like somehow in conjunction with the Negro League museums or something because my friend and I were talking like oh I want to get them but I wish my money was going like even some part of the proceeds towards that and the historical aspect of it or even towards the the upkeep of of rickwood field than just to fanatics again but yeah um but the cardinals actually have the best record in the national league of 24 and 13 since mother's day which is also the day that i attended the game in milwaukee so just going to take my own credit victory lap as well. okay all right yeah We'll get, we'll give you all the victory laps over here, Kels. I th- I think you are solely responsible for the up. I was gonna say the upheaval, the uprising of the St. Louis Cardinals to their rightful spot, two places over, two <laughs> games over five hundred. So two games over five hundred. Woo! Yeah. Well, I, I say I, I I say that I'm very jealous. We're not even there yet. One of these days, hopefully, we'll be able to open the episode with uh, the Astros hitting that five hundred mark. But there are some other teams that are starting to make some moves, make some rumblings here and there. The Yankees, just before we started recording, acquired J.D. Davis and Cash from the Oakland A's in exchange for infielder Jordan Groshans. Groshans? Not sure. Not familiar with him. But J.D. Davis is going to be a Yankee. What do we think about it? That cracks me up. The journey that J.D. Davis has been on from the Giants fucking him over to the A's. And now he's he bitches. I'm headed to the Yankees. Yeah. Obviously, he's, he's going to be a bench player. But say that. Is he going to be a bench player? Because what? Stanton went on the I.L. Yeah, Big G is down. So he might get some more playing time, at least temporarily. But I don't know. I think either way, you'd rather be on the Yankees than the Giants right now, right? Yeah, or the A's. Yeah, for sure. Yay for you, J.D. Davis. But it really cracks me up, though, because of how hard the Yankees fan base goes after the Astros for the all for 2017. I'm all you do realize like Marwin Gonzalez was on your team for a long ass time, right? Like you do realize that J.D. Davis was also on that team. Garrett Cole. No, none of that matters. Okay, cool. I think we talked about this a little bit last week, but one of the reasons that I have found that it's like harder for me at times to want to see the Yankees do well is because they, and and I'm not talking about JD Davis specifically, but they do. Yeah, no, they have no integrity over who they sign in terms of like character or connection to anything previously. Like they're straight in it to win regardless of anything. Clearly names of those guys that are, that make it hard to root for them but yeah they're not really concerned with the like personal integrity of any kind right so i don't yeah, really i'm like whatever that, but well, that's just my personal well. opinion christopher yeah. sanchez gets a four-year 22.5 million dollar extension from the phillies this will start next season and cover his arbitration years so that good on you news for him yeah hopefully so that locks up like three of their four starters now right I, I don't know. I was going to say, what is Ranger Suarez's contract I'm not situation? I'm sure what his current situation is, but let me see if I can find it real quick. But I would think they would, it would definitely be in their interest to get something going with him if they could. I would think because Taiwan Walker went on the IL. How much if, of Taiwan Walker going on the IL is because he's quote unquote hurt versus he just sucks? <laughs> Yeah. And they're just I, all, you know what, like we uh-huh. can't keep doing this every fifth day. So I guess Spencer Turnbull is going to come back up for a little while. I don't know. But, but they play, but they pay Taiwan Walker all that money. But maybe they're just like, you know what? We don't care. We don't care. 
Dave Dombrowski's, I'm not going to be here forever, so we're just going to win now. Let's go. Yeah. I don't know. The Phillies have said they're, they don't disrupt, they don't discuss contract extensions during the season as it could be a distraction. This is what they said a couple uh-huh. of weeks ago about Ranger Suarez, but they do plan to have him around for a long time. So when is his? When does he, he is go into on free one, agency? He's currently on a one year deal. He must already be in free agency because he's on a one year deal for five million. That's it? Yeah. Oh, wow. that was true. So actually, yeah. So he's not in free agency yet. Oh, dang. Okay. Get your money, Ranger Suarez, because holy yeah. shit, man. You you deserve it. So I think maybe he has one year of arbitration. But Good yeah. Lord. Get it done now, Phillies. That's something I would not be surprised to see at all. Yeah, he will hit for agency in 2026. Ooh. So we'll see. Yeah, no, you lock that shit up now, man. It's definitely one to watch. I think we start seeing some more contract extensions here and there. And I think that we might see some, I don't know, part of me thinks that we won't see tr- trade deadline action earlier because there are so many teams that are like still in it and a lot could change in the next 30 days but the other part of me thinks that it's going to be so much more of a seller's market that the teams that are definitely selling like the A's and the White Sox are going to do it earlier because they can be more aggressive Uh, so I don't know. It'll be really interesting to see what actually happens and where players go and like what kind of haul they actually get because of how many teams are still quote unquote in it. So interesting. I did want to ask you about this because I had seen some speculation that it seems like Shota Imanaga is running away with the uh, NL Rookie of the Year. I don't know. Is he running mm-hmm. away with it? I don't know. But he's definitely a top contender. I don't know. How do you feel about that? Because technically he's not like a real rookie. He is a foreign professional player. Do you think Major League Baseball would ever change the rule for foreign professional players not to be eligible for rookie of the year? I don't know. I was thinking about that because my quote unquote rookie of the year, Ronel Blanco, my ace, hasn't played professionally in another league. Because I was like, what if they put an age limit on it? And then I was all, oh, wait, no, we can't do that. Because if that happened, then Ronald Blanco wouldn't even be eligible. But I, I do feel like it would it's a little, not backwards, maybe a little asinine if the rookie of the year, quote unquote, even though he's a rookie in this league, was an actual professional player in another league. But then again, not all leagues are created the same. I agree. I think it's so different to come have success so- taking over. And we see so many players where it doesn't translate, especially in their first year. So I don't know. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, I don't think I have a problem with it. I think it's like a minor annoyance. Because if, say, like we just said, not all leagues are the same. So we we realize NPB is probably second, quote unquote, to the major leagues. But if someone were to come over from like the Dominican League, not it's not the same. Mm-hmm. And would, if he was like a professional over there and then made the transition to over here and had a breakout year, would we still feel the same? Or are we just, is it just because it's the one league that is, yeah, that could probably vie for level wise to MLB? So, yeah, I don't think I have a problem with it. It is a, a tiny annoyance, but I don't think I have a problem with it. Do you think Shota um, Imanaga is like the given NL? Rookie of the year right now. Who even yeah. is the other? There's Paul Skeens, who I think is definitely got to be like at the top of the list too at this point. And Mason Wynn, who is leading all rookies in batting average, among other things. See, and I, that's, but that's another thing. I think there should be some sort of designation between pitcher rookie of the year and position player rookie yeah. of the year. Like, how am I? How... Right? Like, you don't have that designation. How do you compare Paul Skeens that can strike up 43,000 people to Mason Wynn, who... It doesn't translate. Like, it doesn't make sense in my brain, because it's comparing apples to oranges. Yeah, I completely agree. And we're not participating in trophy people here, but I do think we could have a NL 
I mean, we have an NL Cy Young and an NL MVP. So we so, can have... See, I only think that it should be given if there are rookies of the year for pitching. So I don't think like every year should have the NL rookie of the year for pitching. If there's not any good rookie pitchers, you know that's what I'm saying? True. I guess there's, that's probably why there can't really be one is because yeah, there's not always one person who is necessarily worthy of it, let alone multiple. Yeah. So I guess maybe that's why they do it, but shit in Japan, if nobody <laughs> qualifies yeah. for the award, no one fucking gets the oh, award. Yeah. yeah. They're not giving out participation trophies. So all I'm saying is if, if there are rookies of the year that deserve the designation, make it. But I don't. Is Paul Skeens going to have enough innings slash games to be even in the running for that? I, I think don't so. know. He came up plenty early, so as long as he continues okay. to play, I mean, do you think Paul Skeens is going to be an All Star? He could be. Maybe. I, think I feel bad for Jared Jones, though. But then you're like, yeah, so is Jared Jones not? Yeah. Right? Like, Jared, Jared, I've been here from the beginning. Oh, I've been here, too. Yeah. No? Okay. He's also crushing it and deserves a lot of recognition. <laughs> so, I don't know. That whole Pirates pitching rotation, though, has been doing it. Yeah. One of Mitch the Keller's been doing it. About- in our as we move into baseball as baseballing is we've been talking about how many teams are still in it obviously from the balanced schedule and also just from I don't know I think there's just a lot more teams who are playing instead of playing with fire they're playing with mediocrity because they know that all they have to do is get in and that's the pirates like always but do you think the pirates are going to make offensive moves to contend they are currently 37 and 40. They're seven and a half games back from first place in the NL Central, but they're only a game and a half back of that last wild card spot. Are the Pirates going to go for it? I don't think they're going to make the move this year. I think they're, especially with their two rookies, and I want to say that there is another rookie pitcher in AAA that is doing well as well, but I think they're going to wait until like next season slash off season to make some more offensive moves because that's really what they need. They need a couple of big bats and don't get me wrong. We love ourselves from Rowdy Telez. Rowdy Telez cannot carry the lineup. You got Brian Reynolds over there. You got Kutch doing things, but they need a couple of big bats. Yeah. Like really. And so I think they might do something as to not sell at the deadline, but it's not going to be enough to yeah to pave the way for the season but i don't know pirates fans if you could have your wish and what do you think the pirates need to do at the deadline to make a real push because the nl central as much as i love my cardinals and i i think they're on a heater because of me i'm i'm fully aware the nl central is still up for the taking as are all the wild card spots especially in the national league so why not yeah yeah I don't, I don't think it's going to be this year. I think it's going to be, I think they're going to hold off and see if, if it can't be next season. I think maybe next season it will be when the pirates go, they'll have, you know, Jared Jones and Paul Skeens with a year ish under their belts. And, you know, cause they just signed Brian Reynolds, Mitch Keller signed his contract too. I keep hearing Kutch is going to play forever, or Kutch wants to play forever. Oh, we do. Oh, shit. I'm getting breaking news. Breaking news from the Mets-Cubs game. My husband is texting me that Mets closer Edwin Diaz just got tossed for having sticky stuff, for the sticky stuff. Oh, he's been. What? Edwin Diaz. He's been having a rough season. Oh, my. Oh, my. Owen response. Interesting. Oh, he oh. sent me a picture of his hand. It looks pretty roughed up. Send it to you. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Ooh. I can't that's wait. Rough. I can't wait that's... to hear that discourse. Yeah, that's gonna be Oh Carapaza did it. Gonna... Isn't Vic Carapaza the one that's done it all isn't I think isn't so. he... <laughs> I think so. Yeah. What? Mets are up five to two, but they still got three outs to get here, so we'll see. What is on his what are the white things on his hands? 
I do not know. There's there's a lot of something on is his hands. What, what they is think it is. Okay, it's but, yeah, definitely the dirt. But again, but that's just it. So across the board, if other pitchers were allowed to wash their hands, why aren't all pitchers allowed to wash their hands before you eject them? You know what I'm saying? That's my question. Yeah. On all of these. I'm sure he didn't get that. Yeah, I'm sure he didn't get that chance. And it's MLB, whatever. You you make me mad. Yeah, we do need some consistency in the sticky substance lane there for sure. But Susie, back to something that I'm assuming you were pretty excited about. The Orioles Yankees had a highly anticipated series this past week and the Orioles took two of three from the Yankees and they, that last one they spanked them pretty hard did you enjoy oh, yeah keeping up with that I series? did I did my petty bitch self highly enjoyed the Orioles just giving it to the Yankees the first game when the Yankees won I was like okay fine whatever and then all of the Yankee fans are saying that they hit Judge on purpose. I'm all, I don't think they did, but okay, whatever. And then the Yankees hit Gunner in that second game on purpose. Come on, that one was for sure on purpose, guys. All right, whatever. And then for them to walk off that game with Garrett Cole, having that be his returning game, just was extra sweet. And then I don't know. The Orioles said, oh, uh, you, you wanted to, to come for us? Let's fucking go. Yes, do it. But then, you know, for them to score 17 runs, that's two touchdowns and uh, a three-point conversion. Ooh, look at me with my football knowledge. Hooray. Oh, I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm very impressed. I was like, wait, hold on. I'm Two touchdowns is 14. I still need three more points. Oh, yes. I'm very impressed. Tom will be very proud. But yeah, for the fact that, and the Yankees were like, oh, wait, no, we're not, we're still here. <laughs> JK, no, we're not. Made me so very happy, but then secretly scared because it's the Orioles. And then we faced the Orioles and I was like, oh my God, we're going to die. We're going to die. And by we and the Astros. And I was like, all right. So they took. Two, three, and I loved it. Absolutely loved it. But not going to lie, went into that Astros Orioles series, not with high hopes, not with high hopes, because this is where I am in my Astro loving life right now is that I hope for the best, but expect the worst because that's just what we've done up until this point, right? Yep. Yep. And the fact that the three pitchers that we're facing are Grayson Rodriguez, Corbin Burns, and then Albert Suarez. Albert Suarez, not so much. Grayson Rodriguez, Corbin Burns. I'm like, oh, okay. Friday night starter. Hey, Jake Bloss, let's let's just bring you up from double A. You're just going to bypass triple A altogether. And here you go. Just make your MLB debut against, I don't know, the RBI slash most home run hitting team in the league. Welcome to the show, Jake Bloss. And I'm like, you couldn't have given the White Sox to Jake Bloss? Like, what are we doing here? Right. Like, oh nice, God. soft landing spot. <laughs> and not going to lie, that Friday night game was harsh. It was very harsh because guess what? In uh, the fourth inning, Jake Bloss was like, my shoulder hurts. He actually didn't say it. Like, Espada, <laughs> Joe Espada, our manager, came out and was all, oh, what the fuck is, what, what, what's happening? And he got removed for shoulder discomfort. I don't know if you know this, Kelsey, but we're down 43 starters. Yes, yes. Four, 43 Not starters. Enough. All of our starters are down. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's just, all right, that's cool. That's just par for the course. Now, he actually had been doing pretty well, though, too. Like, he kept him off the board. And in the fourth inning, the score was pretty low. I think we were tied or maybe we were ahead. But regardless, he left in the fourth inning. And I'm all, that's that's a lot of innings that we have to cover with our bullpen hooray i love that for us but then we scored 43 runs in the sixth inning we didn't score 43 runs i think we scored nine we scored nine in the sixth inning That'll do and it. at one point it was 14 to three and i was like oh, thank jesus our mop-up bullpen guys can come in they did not mop up <laughs> they just poured more water to, onto the things and we're all what are, what's happening so then our leverage guys had to come in Regardless, we won that game. It was 14 to 11. 14 to 11. They hit 
four home runs, three home runs. And still lost. Wow. They scored six in one of the innings. And I'm all, thank Jesus for that nine run outbreak. Like, I don't even know. But the fact that we chased Grayson Rodriguez early from the game was super fun for us. But I was like, oh, all right, we're not going to get swept. Like, that's that was my yeah. sole happiness that we weren't going to get swept. Because let's face it, that's what this year has become. Because it was Corbin Burns against Ronel Blanco, who admittedly is my ace. And I was like, maybe Ronel can keep him off the board. He did. He did. Ronel, my ace. Kept the vaunted Baltimore Orioles lineup to one run, which was a home run by Jordan Westberg. Jordan yeah. Westberg apparently is the Astros kryptonite because in the last two games of that series, one run, a home run by Jordan Westberg. We're not going to talk about the first game and how many people hit the home runs in that game because Gunnar Henderson hit two home runs in that game. That's We're not going to talk yeah. about that. We're just going to talk about the second two games where we kept the Orioles lineup to a single run and we sl- swept the Baltimore Orioles, Kelsey. Wait, you get to join the swept of the Baltimore Orioles club. The Cardinals and the Astros are the only two teams that have swept the Baltimore Orioles since Adley Rutschman has been called up. Let's go. Yes. I'm. Do you know how down in the dumps Orioles fans are? That the trash Astros swept the Orioles. They're like, what the fuck? What just happened? And I'm all, I get it because it's this season's Astros, but we're the Astros. Come on. I realize that you just dick slapped the Yankees. Did you really think that we were going to go quietly into the night? A lot of us over here in Astroland did, not going to lie. But the fact that we came back in that first game and we're like, is this how it feels to hit again? It does? Oh, okay. That's, we like this. Let's keep doing this. That's what we love about so. this game. And that's why we have to say that baseball is baseballing. Because while the Cardinals swept the Orioles, they got walked off two nights in a row by the Miami Marlins after that. it just You just never know what's going to happen. And the point is you get the wins when you can. And yeah, the Astros can hold their heads high after that series. A team that has held their head high, pretty high, all season long has actually been, as we all expected, the Cleveland Guardians. They took two out of three from the Mariners, which I'm sure you were not mad about. And we are not. We are not mad about it. The general consensus is the Guardians are for real. They have the third best record in baseball behind only the Yankees and the Phillies. The Guardians are for real. Did you know? Have you, did you hear about the wind tunnel theory? Have you heard about that? You didn't see the video, the wind tunnel? <gasps> oh my gosh, Kelsey. We gotta, I gotta show you. I gotta show you the video. I gotta show you the video. So apparently we've always said that the Guardians are not like a home run hitting team, right? Like they are slap hitters. They're not going to hit the long ball, any of that stuff. Apparently there's this theory going around that the Guardians did some sort of like renovation in their stadium and there was these big steel I want to say like canisters they weren't canisters but they were like big steel advertisements and part of their ballpark and apparently they removed like part of those advertisements and it has caused some sort of wind tunnel something wind tunnel effect in the Guardians stadium I don't remember what the Guardian stadium is called what is progressive field progressive field thank you and that's why they have been hitting so many more home runs this season at the park and there was a podcaster and I'm so sorry that I don't remember your name that brought this to light and then the baseball is not the baseball is dead guys oh crap he's part of baseball is dead but he has his own youtube channel but he went on to theorize and go through all of the stats about certain home runs and velocity and exit velocity and distance and all of that stuff and basically stating theorizing quote unquote that this is why the guardians have been hitting so many more home runs at home is because of these removed panels and so i'll have to i'll have to send you the link on it too and i'll have to link it in the show notes as well but there was a ball that I want to say David Fry maybe hit 
that was hit at like 89 miles an hour or something like that. But the way the exit velocity plus the launch angle, apparently this is the only ball at that exact exit velocity and angle that was hit for a home run. Mm. And similar balls like that were outs. And I'm all, what? Yeah. But he he broke it down. He broke it down in in the video. It I was when I say all my flabbers were gasted, this is what I mean because I legitimately had to watch it like four different times to get various parts of the video. And I'm all, oh my God. Wow. All right. Maybe. But I'm not saying that they did it on purpose or whatever. I think maybe it was like an unintentional kind of thing. But I'll have to send you the video. Yeah. So my husband's family is from Cleveland and his sisters and my nephews and niece live there still. And so we, I have not been to progressive field, but that is one that's easily accessible on our list since we have family that lives there. So if I get there anytime soon, I will try to check it out, do some scientific research for us. Yeah. So I would love to see that if you can figure that out, but the guardians sticking to of three from the Mariners I could see because the Guardians are good the Mariners have a team batting average that is very low so I think it is 222 which is tied with the Oakland Athletics wow so that makes sense that makes sense that that is their team batting average and they are leading the AL West by six games Mm -hmm. that's crazy because they're not doing it with their bats. They are doing it with their pitching. Because their pitching is 3.47. That's what their pitching is doing. Their pitching is that good that they are just holding it down. And when we say baseball is baseballing, because, of course, we expect the Guardians to take two, two of three from the Mariners. Okay. But did you expect the Miami Marlins to take two of three from the Mariners? Wait, they did. I thought you were going to say the Cardinals. I was like, expect that either but okay friday night they won three to two and then saturday logan gilbert said not on my watch and they the mariners scored nine and they shut the marlins out fine but then today they won six to four so Hmm. thank you thank you miami marlins for cutting the lead down just a little bit more we appreciate that and this is what i mean when the baseball is baseballing people so We're just going to hope and pray that the Tampa Bay Rays can keep doing it to the Mariners, which who knows at this point, because the Astros were supposed to be good, but we just swept the Orioles. We're going to hang that banner. The Dodgers are playing the White Sox this week. That should be interesting. I was just seeing if there was any matchups coming up. That might be the most lopsided one, but... Possibly, have possibly. Some, uh, some injured list updates. We'll start with the bad news, the maybe a big headline injuries, and then we've got some back in action too. But Jesus Lazardo is back on the IL for the Marlins with a lum- lumbar stress reaction. Did he even make multiple starts since he's been back? He did. Yeah, I think he made three or four starts. Yeah. But. So him and Braxton Garrett. So basically no one from the Marlins preseason rotation that they thought they were going to have. They have. I don't even know who's pitching for them right now. No, couldn't tell you. Yeah, Braxton Garrett is also back on the IL with a left form flexor strain. My goodness. And then yeah, I'm like, now I got to look up who actually is pitching for the Marlins right now. You already mentioned Taiwan Walker. But index finger inflammation, I do know that is very important. There are guys who can't pitch because of hangnails. Like, I totally get it. But index finger inflammation does sound like it could be a phantom IL. Old phantom IL condition as well. Their next starter for tomorrow is Rodery Munoz. I don't know who that is. That's not a name that I'm familiar with. Chirinos is that Yanni Chirinos okay good night and then TBD oh okay so yeah no the poor Marlins have basically nobody 
nobody pitching for them. Yeah, Rodri has oh, played. Yeah, yeah. He's, it looks like he's played six games in the majors. Still pretty new. We'll get another shot tomorrow. Hmm. Yeah. So I just can't only be so concerned with what the Marlins are doing because they <laughs> waved the white flag so freaking early. Who do they trade? Jake Berger? Who else? I think they've got Jake Berger, probably. I don't know. Tim Anderson has been playing a little bit better of late. So mm -hmm. probably Josh Bell, though. I think Josh Bell is probably their yeah. biggest trade asset mm -hmm. right now. I don't, I say Jazz Chisholm. I don't know if, I don't know if a club would take the Overrated. Risk. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if they would take the risk of Jazz Chisholm because of the clubhouse. And obviously, are there veterans that he respects? X? And he's had you know, like, honestly, I, yeah, I just don't know that that he is going to make enough of an impact to get them much back right now. Yeah, Brian David De La Cruz is actually doing really well for them too. Oh yeah, he is. He did some damage against the Cardinals. David Bednar, who's the closer for the Pirates, he is unfortunately on the IL with a strained oblique, and obliques Oof. are usually not a quick thing to come back for yeah. any player. So that is a bummer. For the Pirates. We mentioned that John Carlos Stanton is on the IL for hamstring. Big G having a comeback year for sure. So you hate to see it. Hopefully he can, having leaned out, hopefully he can come back from that a little quicker than he did last season when he had multiple IL stints. And then Gabby Moreno or Gabriel Moreno from the Diamondbacks. I was so sad to see. I think he got hit in the thumb maybe i'm not sure i forget what happened in the when they played the phillies but he left the game with a left thumb sprain and has been put on the il but while one catcher goes down another catcher turns it around and is back in action wilson Contreras is going to be back with the cardinals as early as tomorrow monday june 24th less than seven weeks after he fractured his forearm can you believe it does he have some sort of like magical fast healing bones? What I I don't understand how he's back. Why? How? I don't understand it. Yeah. I I do not know. It must be the nature of the fracture, the specific spot that it was just a straightforward rehab process for him, but yeah, it's pretty amazing. That's awesome. But like Cardinals good on you. The Cardinals now have three catchers who are two of them are bat first for sure the two more experienced ones and then the backup catcher right now who's actually been starting as much as Pedro Pajes has been starting as much if not more as Ivan Herrera recently is defensively the best among the three of them and that he, he is making a difference for sure oh. I forget which I think it was Kyle Gibson's, I'm not sure it was Kyle Gibson's last start or if it was the start before, but there was a start that Pedro Vajes made with Kyle Gibson in which he stole 12 strikes for him in that start. That's Damn. That changes the outcome of games. And oh, for sure. Wow. Yes. I'm really interested to see, that be something that we keep an eye on as Wilson Contreras comes back here, is how they do that. Because... I don't know. I'm thinking, like, does Yvonne Herrera get dealt at the deadline? I don't know. But they have a – now they have a catcher log jam, which is so strange. Interesting. But, yeah, we've had three catchers on our roster um, because our normal two, Yiner Diaz and Victor Caratini, typically if Yiner isn't catching, then he's DHing. Yeah. And Victor Caratini is our quote-unquote backup catcher, but he's actually – a a decent bat and by decent bat i mean he is not a huge black hole i think his wrc plus is like a hundred ish just a like a pretty good player like he's just not a, yeah. a black hole as a catcher he just got hurt sliding into home and so he's on the il now for four weeks so we had been carrying cesar salazar and we're like, oh, okay, like why is Cesar up? Why do we need three catchers? And now we're so grateful for three catchers because Cesar Salazar in that game against the Orioles hit two RBI singles and was actually pretty good defensively. But I think there's some sort of, I don't want to say drama, but there's some sort of something between Fromber and Yiner 
that I don't mm. think Fromber likes when Yiner catches him because he does not I mean, catch him so often. And now Cesar Salazar was catching Fromber today. And so it's just super interesting to me that I'm all, oh, okay. Like you don't want Yiner catching you, but you'll let the backup rookie catcher that's this is like his second time up coming. Okay. All right. Like whatever works. But watching Cesar work back there, I think his receiving is cleaner than Yiner's. And so I'm all, oh, all right. maybe that's a, maybe that's going to be a thing. So we now have our backup catcher. Our backup catcher is now our catcher and Yiner is doing DH duties sometimes and I'm all this is not how any of our season was gonna be planned out I'm like all right cool love that but, yeah it looks like Avon Herrera actually for the Cardinals uh, has gone on the injured list with back tightness so at least the timing of that should be good with Wilson Contreras coming back but it, yeah it sounds like we have a very similar kind of issue there because yeah, Wilson Contreras and DHs often, basically since, especially since Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado have not been often the offensive producers that you would expect them to be all season. Like Wilson Contreras and Devon Herrera were the best hitters on the team for a period of time. And <laughs> so it was like, whoever's not catching is DHing and vice versa. And I guess we could keep rolling with that too, to some extent. And then you've got Pedro Pajes with the defense. So I don't know. That actually makes me feel a little bit better that we're not the only team playing around with three catchers. Yeah. yeah. Now, like I said, two, but I don't think, I don't know how many times teams have three decent batting catchers okay. all at the same time, because that's not a, that's not a thing that. I don't think happened. that they expected Pedro Pajes to, to handle the bat particularly well, but he has, he hit his first major league home run in one of his first starts. I think the, last Friday and then he had a second one on Father's Day when his dad's oh, left yay. and just not like a guy that you expect to get up there and hit, get hits let alone hit home runs so interesting so, okay I was just gonna say the Orioles have good news in that Dean Kramer is expected to return soon for them but I think we've been talking about who the Orioles are going to try to get at the deadline as a closer since like day one of the season is there do you have any clarity on that i don't they may be going and trying to get some starters too because dean kramer sure. apparently has not been doing very well in his rehab starts and the last i want to say the last five starts that the orioles have had none of their starters have gone past five innings and so yeah, their bullpen is like super done and yeah Dean Kramer is uh, fine and if he gets back on track could be solid for them but he's not a Kyle Bradish so he's yeah there. that's so very true. they probably need a starter got, and I want to say they, they brought up Cade Povich who has is fine but he's not he's a rookie and it so I think they're I think they really need to go get another starter and I as, don't know what they will do yeah you're right but they're not putting Craig Kimbrell out there in a close game in the ninth in the postseason. I don't know. He's actually been doing, I say better. He has been doing better. I, I don't know because we never got close. <laughs> so sorry, Orioles. But really, it wasn't their high leverage guys coming in. We didn't see Yenier Cano at all. We didn't see Craig Kimbrell. But I want to say, I think Craig Kimbrell has gotten his ERA down to to something -ish. I say that but I want to say that his closing capabilities has been a little bit better as of late but overall yeah. I would still be very weary <laughs> yeah I don't think they get rid of him I just don't think that he can be their closer I think he can even be yeah. a high leverage reliever for them but I don't think he is their postseason closer yeah I think I would I think I would agree with you there let's see their last over the last five games he has closed and let's see against the Yankees he gave up a run against the Phillies he struck everybody out against Philly he gave oh he didn't give up any runs oh but 
that that wasn't an extra innings. And then Lana. So he has been doing a little bit better. He his I think the walks are maybe an issue. Yeah, I don't think I don't I think they need to get maybe a starter and a reliever for everyone pieces of mind. Everyone's peace of mind. There we go. I ask because my pick for the Orioles closer is Ryan Presley. I don't know. If we keep turning it around and if Ryan Presley keeps turning it around, I don't know if we sell because that quote unquote back end of the bullpen, how the Astros front office, all Astros fans before the season started, that Brian Abreu, Ryan Presley, Josh Hader has been nails the last five ish times that they've gone out and done it. Now, if we somehow fall off, then I think maybe that might be an option. Ryan Presley does go. Maybe Breggy goes. Do you think there there is a situation where they trade Ryan Presley, but they're not sellers? Because technically, do they need? He, he is a closer, but he's not being used as a closer. Yeah. Honestly, I think that he the way that I want him to be used, I want him to be used as co-closers. And he has gotten some closing options when Josh Hader has gone like back to back. But he is like the most expensive setup man ever, essentially. Right. Because right. it's the role he's been given. Although we have Brian Abreu who's who can close out games as well. Really, we have three closers. And I don't. So that's where I just don't see it as a hard sell for them to part with exclusively with him. Yeah, but I want to say Ryan Presley has like a ten trade, ten club no trade list oh. clause okay. in his contract. So I think he would have to approve. I don't. I don't think he would not approve the Orioles, but they. I know they live here during the off season and so this is their home but who knows i don't not anymore and i say that ryan presley's numbers have been coming down but still aren't great they're still not in the great level yet but they're coming down he's been doing better as of late i don't know I, don't you you don't think ryan Helsey's gonna go over to the orioles <laughs> no i do not unless the cardinals take a sharp nose dive here and even i don't yeah no the Cardinals would have to really shit the bed here for the next <laughs> couple of weeks in order for that to happen. I do think Tanner Scott of the Marlins is another interesting. Oh, yeah. Who will go to a contender. And it will be fun to see where he goes. Club that I want to talk about. I want to ask you, Kels. The Washington Nationals. Oh, yeah. Good call. Do you think they're going to do something? Are the Nationals? better than we thought they would be i think i mean they're 30 39 right now yeah they're like accidentally better i know i think they have decided they're in this phase where they're not spending money are they for sale maybe yes they definitely are it's gonna they're gonna get the right price to make it happen is the better question but yeah they're in this like weird flux no man's land of there's no clarity on when the, the quote unquote rebuild ends for them. They're but, half a game back from the wild card. Yeah. They're now in multiple seasons in to have it, having to build a roster based on strategy as opposed to spending money. And the strategy is working and they're winning games in different ways too. So do I think they do anything drastic? No, but do I think they're an annoying gnat that won't go away? The fighting at the heels uh, of the wild card teams, definitely. Could they accidentally end up in the postseason? We'll see how hard baseball baseballs. That's true. Apparently, Sean Doolittle mm-hmm. retired from baseball and is now their. He's, he's not their like pitching best. coordinator. He's I. I th- his official title is something to the effect of pitching advisor or something yeah. like that. And essentially, he disseminates the computer guru stats that into strategist. 
there we go. Pitching strategists. Thank you. Into things that the normal person can understand. Yeah. And because of that, all they're saying, like all of the pitchers, the starting pitchers, the relief pitchers have gotten really much better this season versus seasons prior solely because of Sean Doolittle and I'm all, I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yay for you. But it's yeah, interesting like to see because I was looking at that team and I'm all, there's some pieces on that team that could possibly go places. Was it Kyle Finnegan is, I think is there is one of their, either their setup man or their closer. Yeah. He might even be considered like a closer. He could so be. that might be a, that might be a thing that people would be interested in. And I think that's like a sneaky kind of under the radar. Not many people are talking about it type deal because it's the Nats and they're in that weird limbo. Oh yeah. He's got 21 saves this season. Yeah. Who knew? Okay. There's right now some 31 and a third. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe that's a, maybe that is a thing, but we'll, I guess we'll end on this. It's not really an IL thing, but it is a, he can no longer play for the team type of deal for a while. Aurelvis Martinez. Did you hear about this? No. Kels? Aurelvis Martinez is a rookie that just got called up last week and is now suspended for PED usage. Oh. For 80 games. I did mm -hmm. hear about it. I haven't forgotten about it. Yeah. However, it's not what you would think or why he would be suspended. Let me read you the actual press release. The PED usage. I don't want to misquote, but essentially it was because he and his girlfriend were trying to get pregnant and they did some sort of fertilization in vitro type of thing in the Dominican and the doctor promised Aurelvis that it wasn't nothing was in the medication that would get him popped for the PEDs and apparently it was not that oh shit he yeah. put out a statement saying that saying that sorry that I didn't tell anybody about it that my girlfriend and I were trying to. Drugs. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It is clomiphene. I'm not sure if I'm saying that, but it is an estrogen modulator. It can treat infertility. And yeah, it's supposed to improve the quality of the male part of getting pregnant by stimulating hormone synthesis. So that sucks. But that's why, oh man, they had such a lengthy conversation about this in regards to someone else on foul territory a week or so ago. And in terms of like, just the level of awareness that you have to have with what you're putting into your body when you play at this level. And I think it was Eric Kratz that was saying like, he was paranoid to even get smoothies from places outside of home of something could be in it because that's just the level of, of paranoia that you have to live with and awareness of, of what you're putting into your body. But that's a really sad scenario of when, yeah, it seems like he genuinely was just trying to do something to better a situation that had nothing to do with his baseball life. It sucks. Yeah. So I was like, guys, you have, you got to tell the people you got to tell your, you got to tell your team doctors. I'm pretty sure if you told your team doctor or whoever, they're not going to go and Instagram that shit. They're not going to go tweet that it's, it will right. be private. I advise you, know? you. Yeah. So I, I don't. So a part of me is this is your livelihood, bro. I, why? What? What's happening here? Why would you not just the Blue Jays, say? Blue Jays need all the help they can get. They are thirty-five and forty-two. They are fifteen and a half games back. I mean, of the Yankees, who have the best record in baseball. But yeah, are the Blue Jays selling hard at the deadline? I think so. And honestly, I think they have to because yeah. by now it's too late now that that core of Vladdy and Bo and it's already passed. They were supposed to be this a couple of years ago, a couple of seasons ago. And now it, and I feel bad for Vladdy because that all that quote unquote 
breakout year for Vladdy was mm-hmm. in 2019. Yeah. With the juiced balls. Why are we, why do we keep referencing Vladdy's 2019 numbers? Can we not just admit that 2019 had juiced balls? And so maybe we just need to take all of 2019 stats with a grain of salt. I think there's just that hope that because it was, because there was then the 2020 season that like the 2020 season was like the blip in the radar sort of a thing of that threw him off of any forward momentum, which it could be as much of a thing as anything, but yeah, I am just hoping the Cubs don't get Vladdy G because I really like Vladdy G and, but I like Josh Bell too. I want to see him on the Cubs. So there you go. There you go. Yeah. Maybe we'll have Um, to talk about that as we get more and more trade rumors of your like worst nightmare trades that could happen. Yeah, that's true. So I think let us know if this is something that you guys would like us to record. It would not be our normal content, quote unquote, but it would just be a talking episode of where we think various, like who, which teams A are going to sell, B are going to stay, and then who's going to go where. Let us know if that's something that you guys would be interested in, because I know that both Kelsey and I probably would be pretty interested in talking about it. So even if you guys don't tell us, you guys would like it. We're probably going to do it anyways. So Kelsey, tell the peoples where they can find you on the interwebs. The best place to find me for the baseball content is on Twitter at KBirdTweets. If you are watching on the YouTube channel, it is written right here below me. K-B-U-R-D Tweets. You can also find the KBird Tweets YouTube channel. And that's where my weekly episodes of my solo podcast, Peace, Love, and Baseball are at. Otherwise, you can find me here at Bourbon and Baseball with I'm going to point the right way. Squeezy. <laughs> Anyhow, guys, if you guys have not subscribed to the YouTubes, what are we doing? You need to go to push the red button, hit subscribe, give us all of the five star uh, ratings, give us all of the nice words, and share it with your friends. So you can find the podcast on Apple or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasting audio only feeds and with that we're gonna say yay baseball and record maybe